Okay, in this video we're going to look at the product property of roots with variables in them, like x and y and so on. This is page one. This is page two. These examples. So, let's begin with root nine. We know that root nine is three. I know that. But, we know that, you know that. But, nine can be written as three squared, can't it? So, what's the, the square root of three squared? What times itself gives 3 squared, in other words? Well, what times itself gives 9? The answer is 3. So what times itself gives 3 squared? 3, right? Root 25 can be written the square root of 5 squared. So you're saying to yourself, what's the square root of 5 squared? What times itself gives me 5 squared? Is it just 5, right? So how about this one? The square root of x squared, what times itself gives x squared? Write it down. Well, I know that x times x gives x squared, doesn't it? So shouldn't the answer simply be x, right? How about the square root of y squared? Write down the answer. What times itself gives y squared? You see the pattern? Square root of 3 squared is 3, square root of 5 squared is 5, square root of x squared is x, and so on. The square root is getting rid of the squared in each case, isn't it? Anyway, the answer is y because y times y will give us y squared. How about this one, though? The square root of x to the power of 4. Write down the answer. What times itself gives x to the power of 4? Something times itself gives x to the power of 4, what is the something? Well, x to the power of 4 is x times x times x times x four times, isn't it? Right, x times itself four times, that's x to the power of 4. Okay. Now, I can rewrite that as x times x times x times x. Or in other words, x squared times x squared. So x squared times itself gives x to the power of 4. So the answer here is simply x squared. So what times itself gives x to the power of 6? Write down the answer. First of all, write down what is x to the power of 6 anyway. It's x times itself 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. Now what times itself gives you x to the power of 6? How about this times this? Right? What have we got here? X times itself three times, that's x cubed, right? Times x cubed gives us x to the power of six, doesn't it? So square root of x to the power of six is simply x cubed. So what's the square root of x to the power of eight? And what's the square root of um, x to the power of ten? Write down these. Press pause and get the answer. Well, the square root of x to the power of 8 is x to the power of 4, because x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4 would be x to the power of 4 plus 4 is 8. See, it's 4 plus 4, the exponent, the uh, product property of exponents. You add the exponents and you get 8. So x to the power of 8. And x to the power, uh, square root of x to the power of 10 would be simply x to the power of 5, because x, er, sorry, x to the power of 5 times x to the power of 5 would simply be x to the power of 5 plus 5, or x to the power of 10. In other words, you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's, and that would give x to the power of 10. Okay? So, if we take, you know, this example here, square root of 9a squared, that can be written this with the product property. Product property is root of one number times another number equals root a times root b. The first root of the first number times root of the second number. So with the product property, I can split that up to be root 9 times root of a squared. What does root 9 become? The number 3. What times itself gives a squared? Something times something gives a squared. What is the square root of a squared? Well, is it a? Because a times a gives a squared, isn't it? So this is simply 3 times a, and that's the answer, 3 times a. So what about this one? Square root of 16z squared. With the product property, we can split that up to be root 16 times root z squared. And now work on each of these individually. 
What's the square root of 16? Is it 4? What times itself gives z squared? Something times something gives z squared. What's the something? Well, once again, it has to be z, doesn't it? z times z is z squared. So this is 4z. And that's the answer. Nice, isn't it? Simplifies. This simplifies pretty nicely. So 169 times x to the power of 4, right? With the product rule, how can we split this up? Root of 169 times root of x to the power of 4, right? Root 169 is, do you remember your perfect squares? Is it 13, right? And what times itself gives x to the power of 4? Something times something gives, gives us x to the power of 4. What is the something? Well, is it x squared times x squared gives x to the power of 4? Right. So square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared. So this is simply 13x squared. So now if you had root 2x times root 32x to the power of 3, in this situation, we could probably use the product property and go forwards. In other words, root A times root B is the same thing as root of A times B. So root of this times root of this is the same thing as square root of 2x times 32x cubed. Okay, And now I can just multiply this in. 2 times 32, 64. What's x times x cubed? Well, it's x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 3. Add the exponents, and that's x to the power of 4. Or you could say, okay, it's x times um, 1, 2, 3. x cubed is x times x times x. See? x times x cubed is just this. So that's 4x is multiplied. So in any case, it's x to the power of 4. You should be able to get that. So the square root of 64 times x to the power of 4. Press pause and get the answer. Well, isn't that root 64 times root x to the power of 4? And root of 64 is 8. And square root of x to the power of 4. What times itself gives x to the power of 4? 1, 2, 3, 4. There, this is x, x to the power of 4. See, is x times itself 4 times. And if I split, split these factors in half, I have x times x times x times x. So in other words, x squared times x squared. So the answer is 8x squared, of course. And um, now press pause and do these two examples. Okay, and I, I guess I'll give you the first step in this. The first step in this is to apply the product property and actually multiply the radicands together. So we would go 3a, you know, times 12a, square root of all of that. And now 3 times 12 is 36. a times 8 is a squared. So I have the square root of 36a squared. Now split that up to root 36 times root a squared, or 6, and root a squared is just a, so 6a, okay? So press pause and do this one. Now I'll do it. That's just root of 5y times 5y, isn't it? Which is root of 5 times 5, 25. y times y, y squared, which can be split up into root 25 times root y squared, which is simply... Root 25 is 5, root of y squared is y, right?